Kansas, Wichita State University, Argentina opening set leading eight to five. Mentioned first year head coach John Spara, an assistant coach in both Beijing and London, currently the head coach at UCLA. There was a lot of question. He wanted to do both jobs, but there was a lot of question between the powers it be, and understandably so, at UCLA and with USA Volleyball. Could he do both jobs? Well, they finally worked it out, and I think it's, uh, well, certainly to the benefit of USA Volleyball right now, UCLA had already gotten their man. That ball deflected up and out of bounds. Dan Guerrero, athletic director at UCLA, and Doug Beal, CEO of USA Volleyball, were not able to come to any sort of understanding as it pertained, pertained to John as the job opened up after the Olympic Games. But upon revisiting that in the spring, from three weeks, it went from never having that opportunity to it was a done deal. John was the head coach. David Lee with that very effective jump floater, one of the veterans from the London games, and got to make that defensive play. Lee very frustrated right now, 31 years of age. He's played professionally at the highest level and is a gold medalist from Beijing, but already hit a ball out of bounds, and this is a ball that he just overran. One of the defensive schemes they put in, they have three different ones against this Argentinian team, do the Americans. They have three different schemes, and each one is different based on the hitter that's up there, so there's a lot of information the players have to process. One of the two outstanding world-class setters for Argentina, Nicolas Uriarte. And Gonzalez right on cue. And that ball should come up for Argentina. A kill for Matt Anderson. And interesting stats on Matt Anderson from the previous night's match. Did not have a great match. Hit negative in efficiency, but he was on first ball side out on a perfect pass. He hit negative 600. Yet in transition, he hit 500 to the positive. So a weird sort of night for Matt Anderson in the previous match. I think for a lot of reasons. I think Matt Anderson is being called upon to be the veteran guy, be a leader, be the captain. I think he's feeling some of that pressure. Plus, he's going through some mechanical changes. The coach has been talking to him about what he's doing with his arm swing. And I think those things weigh on you as a player. You start to take the unconscious and make it conscious, and that becomes a problem when you're operating inside of tenths of a second. And he's also now in the scouting report for Argentina or Brazil or Poland or Bulgaria when the opposing coach puts the American names on the blackboard in the locker room. Not because it's alphabetical, but Anderson's name is going right on top. And yeah, not because he wears number one either. That's right. He is really a world-class player at his position and showing you right there with a jump serve ace. I'd like to see a lot more of that as would Pat Anderson. He just has a fantastically whippy arm, put that, puts that just into the gap, nice and high. Now the receiver's backed up to almost the end line. Alexis Gonzalez is standing within a foot of the end line. Cut the ball short. Oh, nice play by Gonzalez, and a beautiful kill out of the middle by Pablo Creer off the perfect pass. Another note on John Spora, he said, boy, Argentina's young middle blockers are awfully good. I mean, we headlined them before the start of last night's match, and that was no surprise. A shank pass here from Uncle Tutia. Argentina doing a great job of focusing on Uncle Tutia, serving him nearly every ball early on. He's got to make a decision there, either open up, take a left foot, step back, and open up with his frame, or go with the overhand and pass that ball. A little insult to injury, Brian Thornton, and back-to-back. -back. Good save that time by Thornton after he just got hit in the face. That ball bounced off, and now quickly down inside by Bengalea and Argentina. Rolling right now, up only 12-9, but it seems like all the momentum is on their side. Again, converting on transition opportunities, that's critical.
First weekend in Wichita, Kansas. Next week against France in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Then the following weekend against Bulgaria in Reno, Nevada, before the United States heads overseas to take on Poland and Brazil. The finals will be held in Mar del Plata, Argentina. Oh, smart shot by Castellani. Again, Argentina just displaying much better efficiency in transition. They did this early on in the first match. They didn't fade it out. Their transition number actually ending lower than the United States. But they did a good job early on in that match. They're doing a good job early on in this match as now Mwanga Tutia will leave the match due to the passing. And we'll see Paul Lottman once again. He subbed in and played well in the previous match. Lottman, a veteran from London, now 27 years of age, played at Long Beach State some years ago. At that time was National Player of the Year, and Matt Anderson ripping the ball out of the middle back. You notice right away the pass goes away from that outside hitter position. It goes right to Eric Shoji, the young libero, but he's up to the task. It's a good view of how a substitute player can alter the game plan of the opponent. Only the second match of 10 in the preliminary round, but do you, like me, get the feeling that this is a kind of must-win situation early in the schedule, given what's coming up for the United States? Yeah, there's a lot of good matches coming up for the United States. They're going to play France, Bulgaria, Poland, and Brazil, and I think France has improved this year. I think Bulgaria, Poland, and Brazil are going to be tough tasks for this young team. If you wanted to win matches in the World League, I think these two were the ones you, you could count on having. But uh, for this year, for the Americans, I come into every match just hoping to see some improvement, not too worried about the score. Well, and, and with that in mind, and trying to look at the bigger picture and trying to see how Garrett Mangatutia might react to this kind of situation and this kind of stage, that was a pretty early hook. Well, he wasn't playing well. What you do is you put him back in. Mm -hmm. You put him back in at the beginning of the next set, and you give him another shot. Murphy Troy again. The United States better from the service line, but Argentina has been up to the task. That's a good swing. I thought that was an excellent choice by Thornton. Excellent choice and excellent delivery. No one's ever questioned Brian Thornton's choices. It's always been the delivery. That one is on the money. Murphy Troy high up into the block, and Lottman giving it the look out below in the United States, creeping back into this opening set. Again, best three out of five. First four sets to 25 points must win by two. Fifth set will be played to 15 if necessary. Anderson again. I like the aggression of Anderson, and I like going to him early here in transition. He hit well in transition in the previous match. He's calling for the ball, and you need to give a number one the ball when he wants it. Anderson now three of five. Castellani finds a way to rattle that ball in between the American blockers. We've come to the second technical timeout. Argentina, just like in the opening match last night, getting out early in the opening set, will step aside. Argentina leading 16-13. Opening set here in Wichita, World League International Volleyball Competition, Argentina leading by three. Let's update you on the current standings in the other groups in Pool B. Russia swept Iran the opening meeting, Italy with the, an opening match win over a very good German team, and Serbia goes to Cuba and wins in Havana. So that was a very good start for the Serbians, and in Pool C, you see the results there as well. Korea, an improving team. That pool is going to be wide open and a tough start for Gary Sato, the new American head coach as the head man for Japan, making a big piece of history. Now Gary Sato has a lot of work to do, both in the volleyball gym, but also in the culture of that team. 
That's going to be an important change, and I don't think an easy change as Japan has brought in their very first foreign-born coach. That ball just tipped out of bounds. When you say that, I mean, Japan has been exalted in the volleyball world on both the men's and women's side, but that was a long, yeah, long recently. time ago. Long, long time ago. But like when I was playing, not when you were playing. But when you say change the culture, what do you mean by that? We're going to have to do a culture of quality, not quantity. A serve from Argentina there, and a lot of pointing back and forth. <laughs> well, oh, nearly an ace serve. I guess it was called in by the linesman and called out by the upper referee. But I, their, their culture has been a one of quantity. I remember my first trip to Japan with the national team. They came in. We came in for the match an hour and a half before the match. The Japanese national team is in there spiking balls. We played the match. We won. The Japanese team held practice after the match. It's crazy. You just can't do that to the modern day athlete given the demands. Well, and especially how athletic the game has become. Castellani once again, and boy, is number two in light blue and white off to an outstanding start. His very famous and legendary father, Daniel Castellani, maybe the greatest Argentinian player of all time, although there's some argument about that, and rightfully so. Would be very happy with his son's start. Argentina now leading 18-14. Five for seven, no blocks, no errors. is a great start for anyone. Bad pass for the Americans. Anderson right over the top of the block. Bears repeating, number one in blue, out of West Seneca, New York. London Olympian, six foot ten, touches 12-2. And thinks he can touch 12-5. Thinks he can take it even higher. Wow. Young man has an incredibly bright future and great present in this sport. What a good delivery once again. And the middle blockers for Argentina continue to be so effective, both attacking and blocking. And Argentina continues to handle the ball effectively, even against some very good United States serving. I have been impressed with the ball control of the men in blue and white. Troy over the top and misses that into the cross court corner. So another unforced error for the United States. Just the second so far, but coming at critical moments and now the lead quite comfortable for Argentina 20 to 15. Yeah. 15 of 21. <laughs> 700. 15 I of mean, 21. The good news is the Americans have doubled their from 150 to 300, given the first set. <laughs> Good crowd on hand here at Wichita State again going on to Tulsa next week to take on uh, another fresh faced team from France and I say that because if you look at the rosters around the world I mean this is the first year after London and also just the the first set of co competitive matches with a long way to go for London. So you're looking at some rosters and seeing some names that nobody has seen before. So everybody doing the same thing, trying to find out what the next generation looks like. Hey, as a volleyball fan, you're in on the ground floor here. You're going to see some of these guys and in four years go, I remember watching that kid when he got his first chance to play some international volleyball with the senior team. That ball off the block and out of bounds. And now Argentina continues to excel in transition. That ball worked off the block. Neither team with a block. For the United States, they're having a better hitting night than they did in match number one. They're hitting over 300. The bad news for the Americans, their opponents are hitting about 700. Argentina supremely efficient in the offensive phase of the game. Nicholas Bruno, defensive specialist and serving specialist coming on. You saw a little contact under the net. Volleyball is not supposed to be a contact sport, but uh, Anderson and one of the Argentines, a little collision under the net, but incidental contact. David Smith quickly out of the middle. And you'll notice a lot of contact with the net in between plays, and that's being allowed to go now in international volleyball. They're trying to come up with ways to have fewer stoppages of the game. And when you touch the net and it doesn't interfere with the play, when you touch the bottom of the net, the middle of the net, they're going to let it go. You notice the holes in the net, much smaller now 
Brand new kind of net for the indoor game. I think the ball will play out of there a little bit better. And I like the new interpretation. If you contact the net at the top as part of making a blocking move or something, it's still a violation. But I like this new interpretation. Pretty tight set to Troy. Smart shot. Reset the point. Oh, Uriarte's got to make that play. Lotman really ran under that ball. Oriarte nearly there, but he was anticipating much the way an outfielder does in baseball that that wall was coming up, in this case, the bench. No warning track. No. Yeah, so Lotman's going, come on, run out of room. <laughs> Timeout called by Argentina, not taking any chances at all with this opening set. Argentina has led throughout, and they continue to lead 21-18. The best server for the United States, their captain back to the line, number one, Matt Anderson. Played at Penn State years ago when he helped lead the Nittany Lions to a national championship and one of the few players, like along with Clay Stanley, who left college early to turn pro, signing his first contract in the Korean League, and Castellani somehow up at the top of the block able to tip that ball to the floor. Decision making. That is what experienced, effective international hitters excel at. Castellani has shown us a lot of good decisions, not to mention the range needed to hit seven for nine in this first set. And Castellani, he's played a lot of international matches. How old is he? 22. That's what happens in the system all around the world, except for the United States. United States players just coming out of college, really no touch with the international game at the age of 22. Most of these Argentine players have probably 100 caps for their national team and at least triple that in their professional clubs. That ball served out of bounds by Smith. And now the advantage is 23 to 19. Remember, first four sets to 25, win by two. Double substitution, Luciano DiCecco, the second setter. And I don't mean second on the order of who is better. Uriarte and DiCecco really, really strong. And Rumanetti, Bruno Rumanetti are coming on as well up front. Off the right side, Troy once again. Thornton looked better to you tonight. No, he's still kind of hit or miss. I think he's, he, this one he hits. This is a good set to Troy. About three, four feet off the net. Murphy Troy nice and quick onto that ball. I like the quickness of Murphy Troy on the right. United States running out of time right now and trying to look for a way to break down the serve reception of Argentina. Maybe an opportunity here, and they force an unforced error. Really bad choice by Romanuti on the left side for Argentina. Now, a poor choice caused in part by the serving of Murphy Troy, who threw the ball too low and too far in front, but stretched out and drove it. Good adjustment by the young man on a bad toss. 23-21. And look at that, an ace off Alexis Gonzalez, who was batting 86% last night in terms of perfect passes in the opener. Good serving by Troy. You were lamenting the fact that they were serving the libero. Well, that was float serve. If you hit your best jump serve, get after anybody. So timeout is taken by Argentina. Their lead was 23-20. An unforced error by Argentina, and then the service winner by Murphy Troy. A lot like last night, the United States lost the opening set 25-18, but tied at 20 in the second set, let that get away, won the third, and then they lost the fourth 26-24. So it's just a couple of plays here, here and there. Murphy Troy said to me before this match that he wanted to crank it up from the service line. He has done that. That, another ace for the Americans behind the hand of Murphy Troy, but I like that he has been hitting the ball hard. And when you talk about strategy serving, 
your jump floating, if you're hitting an easy spin serve, and you're talking about location. When you're hitting your best serve, you get back there and hit your best serve. Let the, uh, the opponents deal with it. If your best serve falls in the libero, well, that's okay. Troy again. Took a little bit off. Perfect pass into the middle and off the top of the block. Oh, David Lee touched the ball. There's no question about that. He acknowledges. He's trying to put after, a question mark. After, after denying it at first. <laughs> that was a good call by the official. Good gamesmanship from number four. Apenandos Jurapodros from Greece is the head referee. So set point number one for Pablo Bengalea, the leading scorer in the opening match for Argentina. 16 points total, 15 of those coming on kills. Troy keep trying to keep the Americans alive here in the opening set. Troy is stuffed straight down. First block of the set for Argentina comes at an opportune moment. Beautiful set by Thornton, good delivery. Troy with a nice swing. That is just a well-formed three-man, or probably two-man block. Good hand position. I like the swing from Troy. Nothing wrong with that one. Argentina led throughout. They led 16-13 at the second technical timeout. The United States got within one late. And then the big block by Argentina gives them the opening set. Teams back out on the floor here at Charles Koch Arena on the campus of Wichita State University. Argentina winner 3-1 last night in the opener of the preliminary round for both of these teams in Group A. David Lee in the United States falling once again at the uh, opener of the second night, 25-22. Falling once again, but a much better set from the Americans. They hit 321. That's a respectable number. Yeah, it's 22-25. You still lose. You got to do something to destabilize the Argentine reception. I think you got to cut some balls short. You have to somehow get them out of rhythm reception-wise, hit the gaps, because your opponent, Argentina, right now hitting 607. 607, that's going to win darn near every set you play if you can side out and hit at, with that kind of efficiency. So how do you slow down Argentina? How do you get them out of such a, uh, a confident offensive rhythm? I think the United States has been serving pretty well. Three, three aces in that first set, hitting the gaps well. You just have to continue on that because there's no way a team can sustain that level of passing if you continue to hit those quality serves. One-on-one -on -one block by Castellani against Anderson after the tight pass. So from zero blocks to two in the last two plays. The first play of this set, the last play of the last set. And for the American side, the other thing they have to do, if they're going to make this close, if they're going to make up those three points in that first set and going forward, you have to be more efficient in transition. You have to get more kills in transition. You get more quality sets in transition. Well, here is Argentina in transition. And a net violation called against the United States. Pereira with the kill in any case. And this is what Argentina has been doing well. When they get an opportunity, even when it's not ideal, they've been converting it into points. You see, that violation, for those that aren't that familiar with the new interpretation of the rules, was in an active blocking maneuver at the top of the net. So, of course, the net violation is called. David Lee high and hard up into the block of Bengalea. Another number for you. So I gave you the hitting percentages overall, which is 267 to 621 right now. Argentina with the advantage. In transition, the United States, 0 .091. Argentina, 0 .750. That's 750 wow. in transition. Wow. Nine kills to the Americans, four. And, and unheard of at 750, because again, to get inside the numbers, transition play means usually after a dig, it's very predictable where the ball is going offensively and still Argentina able to get the ball to the floor three quarters of the time. Castellani. Nice pass by Lotman on that play. There is a beautiful offensive attack from start to finish. Nice calm pass. I like what Paul Lotman is doing. He's in there to give passing stability. He's very quiet with his platform, with his body when he moves to a ball. And he's getting some nice passes up there for setter Brian Thornton. It's a fine line for Matt Anderson, who just had that kill on the outside, the delivery from Thornton, who goes back to serve. And Bengalea is stuck. But just to finish that thought, Matt Anderson touches 12-2. The United States, under the system of John Sparrow, wants to play much faster. So fast and high sometimes are hard to uh, put together. Fast and range becomes the equation. How much range can you get out of how much speed? That was the Americans' first block, and they followed up with a service error. 
Brian Thornton played for John Spira at UC Irvine, took last year off in the professional league, stayed in the United States, said he enjoyed himself tremendously, didn't uh, strengthen his bank account any, so he's going to be headed back overseas. You no, know, he had some delicate family issues going on. And he was able to be in the United States for that. That's one of the big challenges for these players to be gone halfway across the world when there's issues going on with friends and family here in the United States. Castellani once again another transition success. Yeah, the, the Americans fail in transition and the Argentines succeed. Good touch, great help from the left front there. That was number 12, Perea, in there helping out on the quick attack and creating the opportunity for Argentina to once again dish the ball. And Castellani, 8 for 10. No errors, no blocks. That's 800 on the outside. Fantastic. Perea is hitting a mere 750. Another great touch, good help from Perea. Combination play and ripping out of the backcourt, Bengalea. This is where it starts to become a little dismaying, I guess, if you're the Americans, because you're just getting beat upon every time you give your opponent a ball. Kevin, what was it? Because I want to tell you. Argentina once again with good coordination between their front court blocking and then quick transition leads to a crush out of the middle back. And Argentina rolling here 6-3 in the second set, already up one set to none. Third time in a row, Perea with the help. And stuff block on the outside, Anderson and Smith. His coach Javier Weber very upset with Perea for that one given the the hands out, he wanted him to hit it flat off the top of the fingers instead of trying to drive it through that well-formed United States block. Well, they're winning. They, being Argentina, are winning every long rally. So why take such a critical swing? Keep the ball in play. The longer it goes, the better it is for Argentina. Ace, oh boy, just out. The linesman faked me out there. He was giving it this for a second, and that was just wide. Looking for the wrist away to work on that front row guy. Ooh. That is out. Good call. Yep, it was an excellent call. That ball was hovering above the line for a long time. Free ball again for Argentina. Boy, Uriarte does a magnificent job keeping his hands high, delivering to the middle, and at the first technical timeout of the second set, teams will head to the sidelines, and Argentina leading the United States 8-4. Although down just a little bit, Argentina still off the charts in terms of their hitting efficiency. 22 of 36 for 528. The United States 15 of 38, hitting just 263. As Sebastian Sole, 21-year-old middle blocker, already with an Olympic Games under his belt. 
Lachman high off the top of the Argentine block. Uh, still back into those numbers, Paul. I'll give you the transition numbers again as well. Forget the percentages. All you need to know is that Argentina has 12 kills in transition to the Americans' four. We've seen why Argentina is so good at their transition. Why is the United States struggling so much? I think it's lack of familiarity between hitters and setters, and I think it's also lack of touch on the ball in the first and second context, just not providing the type of set that the hitters need. There's Eric Shoji, one of two Shoji's very famous volleyball family on this American squad. Kavika Shoji, the setter we saw last night, that ball into the middle. There's a perfect example. That is not a well-passed ball. That certainly is well off the court, but Brian Thornton has to do a better job of getting this ball high enough. You cannot throw the ball flat into Matt Anderson there. It's either got to go high to Murphy Troy, high to Matt Anderson in the middle, or high to the left-hand side, one of those. You cannot throw the ball at nine feet and expect to get a kill. Lutman, that ball is stuffed straight down in the United States. In real trouble here in the second set. Already used one timeout, and there's another. We'll step aside. The United States head coach John Spira already burning another timeout here early in the second set. All Argentina so far here on night two, the second match of the preliminary round, opening weekend. Korea and Japan started early, but everybody else in the world, the other 16 nations, starting their World League pursuit. Six teams out of the 18 will advance into the finals in Argentina. Beautiful dig by Shoji, but Argentina once again back in transition, hitting the ball well enough that they get it directly back, so they don't get a kill on the first transition, but on that second one they do. And now a change at setter. Well, I mentioned that there were a couple of Sochis, and now they're both on the court at the same time. Their father, legendary head coach at the University of Hawaii, been there almost four decades and has four NCAA championships to his credit. And both of his young sons played at Stanford University before moving on to the professional ranks. They both play in Germany, not for the same team, mind you, and then have reconvened on the national team for the first time. There is Kavika Soji. They play for the same team right now. Incredibly proud father, Dave Soji. Yeah. That ball served out of bounds. I was trying to think of another brother combination that represented the United States on the national team, and you got to go back a long, long way. Ernie and Rudy Sawara. That's a long time ago. I'm trying to think of other brothers that have been in the gym with the national team. Yeah. My younger brother in the gym briefly with the national team a couple of times. Sawara is one of the great families of volleyball. Argentina leading 13 to 7, already up one set to none. And a stuff block one on one. I like that Matt Anderson got the block here. What I really like is what he did with his hands and his feet. He's ready, good early move, and he is straight over at the moment of contact. Matt Anderson should be a huge factor in blocking. He is 6'10 and all of it. Lotman again. What a dig by Choji down the line. And Bengalea high off the inside blocker and registers the kill once again. Start seeing flashes like this out of Eric Choji, and you start wondering what is possible as this kid gets better and better. Just hung in there, great reaction to that ball. Unfortunately for his American side, Argentina took another good swing. And Anderson returns the favor, hitting high up into the block, deflecting that ball out of bounds. 
Those that have listened to these broadcasts for the last couple of years have heard me say it. When you hit the ball high and hard, good things happen. Keep it up into the hands. That's why the swing that ended that first set with Murphy Troy, I'll take that swing. And nine out of 10 times, things will go well for your side. Oh, Argentina bungling that play. A rare miscue for the South Americans, and now it is 14 to 10. They have been really smooth at the offensive and defensive end relative to the United States. Here's David Lee. Very, very good jump float serve. going to be a net violation called against Dave Smith. Argentina back to serve now leading 15-10. Even when things don't go smoothly for Argentina in transition, they are finding a way. Missed time between the middle and the setter there with Uriarte and Soleil. But Soleil making a great selection, a great choice again. And that's the thing that the Americans are going to get better at as time goes along. Their young hitters will get better at making choices when things are not perfect. Henderson ripping the ball down the line. It's interesting to watch Argentina. Young, but still very experienced at the same time. And they're not at all hesitant just to keep the ball in play. They don't panic. They just give the ball to the opponent and then move on to the next contact, whereas the United States seems to be really putting pressure on themselves and not smooth at all. And Bengale is stuffed on the outside. Now Argentina looking to make a couple of subs. They're going to change and bring in the double sub a little bit early here with DiCecco and Romanuti. We'll give Argentina a couple more options there in the front row. They don't seem very confident in their back row capabilities. Haven't seen a lot of right side back row attack out of Argentina. So go to the double sub and keep everyone in the front row. Romanuti will now be in the left front. So Romanuti on a couple of occasions last night, six foot four, 24 years of age, and new to this Argentine roster, but uh, volleyball is very, very popular in Argentina. Not uh, as populous or not quite as popular as in Brazil, but they've got a, a pretty good depth of talent. That ball hit out of bounds, and now the struggles continue. And those who watched the previous match will remember that Kavika Shoji went to a jump float, this time jump spin. I like the aggression out of Kavika Shoji now from the service line. The confidence that that's showing. Part of the battle for this United States team is they're going to be down in a lot of matches. They're going to be facing teams with a lot more experience, a lot more talented players. They have to somehow maintain their confidence on their side and what they've done in their gym, their system, and, and their ability wherever they happen to be in this developmental process. A look at Shoji once again. He has a pretty good jump serve. I would stick with that. Especially if you can place it in good spots as he did there as he cut it across the field. You don't have to hit the ball hard all the time. You have to hit it to the right spot. Now you want to be able to hit the ball hard all the time. Don't get me wrong. I like the David Smiths, the Matt Andersons, the, uh, the Murphy Troys out there hitting the ball hard for the Americans. But if you don't have that, get good at recognizing where the weaknesses are in the receivers. And right now the weakness is still, if you cut it to the left, there's a lot of court in front of the setter. Out of the timeout called by Argentina. And right back to the middle once again. An easy kill for Sebastian Sole. So a little bit of order restored out of the timeout. And just like that, quickly to the technical timeout as Argentina leads the United States 16-13. Already up one set to none. Argentina leading 16-13 here in the second in Wichita and the preliminary round moves on to Tulsa, Oklahoma, Tulsa Convention Center on June 14th and 15th against France and then Bulgaria will be uh, the next guest to Reno, Nevada. That's at the Reno Convention Center June 28th and 29th 
and then the United States goes to Poland and then finishes up the preliminary round in Brazil. Be sure and check NBC Sports Network and Universal Sports for air dates and times. And if you're interested in tickets, you can go to USA Volleyball. Dot org and uh, look up ticket information for those remaining sites in the United States. Back with two-time Olympian Kevin Barnett. I'm Paul Sunderland. Thanks for joining us here on NBC Sports Net. Barrera with a wonderful save, navigating in between the scorekeepers and the linesmen and everybody else, our camera crew. And Murphy Troy registering another kill off the left side. The left side delivery of Kavika Shoji has been excellent since he entered this match. Perea got that one all the way to the warning track and back in. But the left side delivery has been on pace. It's had good distance from the net and great height from Kavika Shoji. If you're just joining us, Argentina won the opening match last night, also here in Wichita, three sets to one. Anderson. That is ball ripped over the top. Is there a touch detected? Yes, there is. A touch called by the down referee. I think that was a good call. On a great swing, well formed block, reaching up high. American block had their hands way up high, and the Argentine side doing a great job utilizing the fingertips. And right back at you, Dave Smith, that ball off the top of the block of number 14, Pablo Creer. Dave Smith was a good server in the opening match. One of the few bright spots for the United States. You can see there wearing his hearing aids, uh, suffered about a 90% hearing loss. Congenital problem that he was born with. That's a pretty good joust. <laughs> One by Pereira. Smart move by Pereira. This is a veteran player. He goes all the way underneath. Watch his footwork. All the way underneath, then straight up in contact with the ball. The Americans have done a good job. The last couple of serves have kept the Argentines 10 feet or further off and provided the Americans at least an opportunity to destabilize the perfect pass offense Argentina has had. But Argentina is still converting in transition. 600 they're hitting in transition, 16 kills. Uriarte and Castellani back on as Uriarte, the setter for Argentina, misses that jump serve. Murphy Troy will go back to the line. Number nine in blue, Argentina still leading 18-16. Oh, what a good block that time out of the middle. A little bit late, but hands high for David Lee. David Lee does a great job of just sticking his hands up there. That time a perfect reception on a tough pass. And David Lee, boy, when he's in a spot where he doesn't belong or he got stuck, he does a good job with his hand positioning. And the ball when, when the ball hits him, it generally bounces good for his side. Fourth stuff block for the United States. Argentina with five. Another good serve from Troy. And high off the top of the block once again. That is really, really good use of the top of the block. Smarts is what's keeping Argentina ahead in this match. And in this set, 19-17, the United States certainly within striking distance. But Perea, again, making a smart choice. You saw him get under it before and joust. This time, high and flat off a lot. And his reward? Exit the match. Well, he's uh, giving way to a serving and defensive specialist, but Pereira, Federico Pereira has certainly done his job. Six of, ele six of 11, hitting 364, and making a very tough transition at the Olympic Games. He was an opposite, and now he's playing on the outside, and as an opposite, you have no receiving responsibilities. Now he's in the reception every play. That ball hit out of bounds, one on one. Perfect delivery, and Murphy Troy just missed it. Yeah, I think that's a good set. Great pass by Matt Anderson. Terrific footwork sliding. And John Spra. Feeling the aggravation, feeling the learning process right there. Now you can talk about seeing the big picture all you want, but it's still all about the scoreboard each and every night. Coaches don't want to lose any more than the players do. That is full circle. 
That ball drifts out of bounds. That's a break for the United States because Nicholas Bruno serve the ball in the court and give your block. You're in there to play defense. You can't play defense. You serve the ball out of bounds. Argentina leading 20 to 18. Lotman can be a pretty good server. Oh, what a great pass. Murphy Troy. Argentina doesn't get the point, but they get the highlight reel right there with the kick save. Again, the quickness of Troy. I've been impressed, not only with his footwork, but also his arm. He is faster than I expected on that right side. And by the way, the Americans can't make that play. The Argentines, <laughs> the Brazilians, and a couple of other countries, but, but not the Americans, not yet. Don't tell the Italians they're not on that list. Okay, Italy's on the list. I, I, I said a couple of other countries. Stuff blocked by Matt Anderson way over the net once again. And we're tied 20 all. Familiar territory from the first match, which was tied 20 all in set number two as well. I couldn't come up with Diego Maradona's name. I think with, the, with Matt out there, it's going to be middle and outside again. Remember, this guy, one, he's tipped a little bit more than he has in the past, so they want to think about what he's doing. Paul Lottman will continue to serve and tied at 20. United States on a little mini run here when it looked like they were out of this second set, 16-13. And Lottman misses that long. Scrambling by Argentina, but can't get to the play, and we're tied once again. Tied at 21. You mentioned the previous match where it was 20 all in that second set. The Americans gave up a 5 to 1 run. But the mentality, I think, a lot different tonight for the Americans. They're looking tougher, they're playing more together. Very difficult to play the sport of volleyball together when you haven't spent much time together in the gym. The Americans have improved night to night. Out of the middle once again. The middle attackers of Creer and Soleil. They were superbly efficient last night, and now six of seven out of the middle now for Creer. Credit Uriarte and Soleil for that connection there. Soleil wide open, facing facing uh, Uriarte, and Uriarte doing a great job of delivering that ball. That is not an easy play to make. Five feet off the net. Soleil four of eight, Creer. Henderson ripping inside the block, but dug by Bengalea. And missed down the line. Ball was too tight coming out of Kavika Shoji's hand. Murphy Troy just not able to stretch out and get over the top of it. What a dig by Bengalea because Matt Anderson hit that ball as hard as he is capable. 23-21. Remember, the United States out of timeout. Big break now for the Americans as Castellani misses this one. Matt Anderson needs to step up and demand the ball. He's in the front row, especially in transition. Number one ought to be yelling and forcing the setter to give him the ball. Late in the second set, Argentina out of timeouts as well. Kavika Soji back to serve. And a serve. That ball right on the back line. Javier Weber can't believe it. Wow. Aggression from the service line. He cut it back the last two times he served. This time, straight down the line. Shoji again. The 
United States for the lead. Not yet. Bengale again, and now Anderson digs him. And Anderson hits that ball out of bounds. What an exchange. A couple of heavyweight boxers standing in the middle of the ring. Great international volleyball, fantastic rally. Unfortunately, the Americans again come up on the short end of it. They set the right guy. You want Matt Anderson to get the ball in that situation. Well, he made a great swing. It was just an equally magnificent dig by that young man right there, Pablo Bengalea, wearing number 20. Set point number one. Javier Weber told us last night, he said, wait till you see Bengalea. He wasn't on the roster in London, but he's going to be really big for us the next several years. But comes up well short there. Tied at 24. That about sums it up right there. <laughs> Shake your head. Come on, you got to put the ball in on set point. Well, you got to think as we head into overtime, so to speak, advantage Argentina. They've been not making nearly as many errors. They've been the more solid team as far as their reception is concerned. And Anderson comes right back and misses that way long. I'm okay with Matt Anderson going for it. He needs to learn how to hit the serve in all situations. This is a learning opportunity, not just about the score on the scoreboard for this young man. I like him going for it at that moment. Set point number two. Luckman finds a small seam. Boy, a little crack in the Argentinian wall. Javier Weber is beside himself. Can't believe that made it through the block. I'd like to see David Smith take a swing at this one as well. He is. But doesn't he have to keep it in after Anderson He's been in a good missed? enough rhythm. David Smith can go for it. Tied at 25. <laughs> Castellani is stuffed by Lee. Now this is the one that has to be in. Great move by David Lee along with Paul Lottman. This is the one David Smith has to be able to place at 75 or 80 percent. Again, there's a lot of space in front right now. The Argentine reserve or service received back way up within three feet of the end line. Set point number one for the United States. Lotman, tough chance, sprays that one, dug by Gonzalez. Oh, what a stab by Joji. And that'll do it. Just like last night, a real battle in set number two. Last night, Argentina got the better of it, but the United States, a big, crucial crumb comeback, and they close out the second set to even this match at one set apiece, and Paul Lottman was superb towards the end. A couple of critical kills. The United States wins the second set, 27-25. Back in Wichita, international volleyball coming your way on NBC Sports Network. Thanks for joining us. Opening weekend of the preliminary round in Group A. Argentina won the opener three sets to one. The United States and Argentina now tied at a set apiece. And one of the big reasons, Paul Lottman, a couple of critical kills off the left side, including set point. Another big reason the United States won that set. Seven blocks for the United wow. States in that set at zero in the first set. And they've also cooled off. Ivan Castellani, who was 8 for 10 at one point, but he's been stuck three of his last four swings. So Dave Lee and Matt Anderson, a big part of those blocking numbers throughout that second set. Seven blocks is like a 40-point quarter in the NBA playoffs where it's defensive-oriented. That's a big, big set. Anderson there, and so was Eric Shoji. Change at the opposite position for the Americans. In comes Carson Clark, the lefty. So now we have a new setter and a new opposite from where we began with the Americans in this match. You a little surprised to see that given that the Americans came back to win that second set? Yeah, I don't know how much you want to mess with it. I mean, Murphy Troy only hitting 6 of 18 with an efficiency down around 100. So time to look at the other opposite perhaps. And this is a learning opportunity. And those two guys, Clark and Troy, were about even in the last match. 
little conversation down courtside between Milan Labashta from the Czech Republic, the second referee. A little problem with the Argentinian sideline. A, a foul tip goes down somewhere for David Lee. I want to see David Lee hit that one twice in a row. That had a complete side spin on it. An amazing swing for Dave Lee. Dave Lee, one of the more unique arm swings in the world, makes him difficult to block because his arm comes from so low, but it also makes him difficult to set. The United States has not been smooth, make no mistake. A lot of new combinations in Argentina flowing quite comfortably with four starters on the floor from the London Olympic Games. And there is Carson Clark, played for John Sparrow won an NCAA championship at University of California, Irvine. Played the Pan Am Cup last year for an American B team and also played in the 2010 World Championships for the A squad. I was kind of surprised not to see Carson make more of an impact in the next two years and not end up backing up Clay Stanley. That spot went to Dave McKenzie, who did an incredible job as a serving sub, but we didn't see much of him. At the opposite spot, we saw him during one match uh, in the Olympics for an extended period of time. Well, we talked about it in the opening match. Uh, Clay Stanley recovering from knee surgery, took the year off. He's training very, very strongly and effectively right now. He's training with this group of players. He's not going to compete this summer. What do you think his future is or the prospects of the chance that at a really advanced age for a professional athlete, he could play in Rio? I think the entire focus of the organization and Clay Stanley is getting him to Rio. Clay is such a special talent, MVP in 2008, that gold medal performance, and, and probably the best player in the 2012 games until he injured his knee during that match against Russia. You just do everything you can to see that a man like that, a talent of that caliber, makes it to the next Olympic Games. And if that means fewer reps, if that means he only plays the last couple of years in any substantial period of time, that's fine. You do whatever's necessary to get big number 13 back playing opposite for John Spira come Rio. If Clay Stanley one, was able to make it onto the floor in Rio de Janeiro, that would make him a four-time Olympian. His first appearance at the Athens Olympic Games, the United States finished fourth, one in Beijing, and then fifth in London. Yeah, four-time Olympian, a pretty rarefied place for any athlete, especially an opposite. The amount of pounding that opposites and outsides take on their body, on their shoulders, their backs, their knees, their ankles, it's very unusual to see a four-time Olympian at that position. We've seen four-time Olympians in the women's game more commonly. I think of Danielle Scott Ahuda. Terra Cross battle. Correct, and then Lloyd Ball on the men's side who made four Olympic games. And the tap down by David Smith, not violating the plane of the net. Argentina is still on top, however, 5-3 here in the third. Oh, Dave Smith maybe getting away with one there. That's I the ball so. you need to hit. You need to show the referee that that ball was on your side. I think that one was over. Argentina has certainly has a case in my mind for an over call there against Dave Smith. The ruling is that if any part of the ball at all is above or on the side of, in this case, the United States and Smith legal play. But I agree with you. It looked like he might have been a little early on that yeah, play. It does not get called that way usually. Another beautiful attack by Creer. It doesn't get called that way. Usually the way it gets called is if you can kind of tap it down and dunk it, then it gets called that way. It's Creer way up there. And that is a severe angle. He's already pushed to the right side of the court and continues to go into that wrist away space. Career now six of eight. No errors, has not been blocked. And that ball set straight out of bounds. And oh, a touch is detected. Yeah, I think Dave Lee got a little piece of it and then the block got a little wow. piece of it as it went by. Good call, this, Kevin. I didn't see either one of those. This is a flashy set. I'm not sure about this one from 12 feet. Oh, yeah. That's Kavika Shoji going, look what I can do. <laughs> getting, a, getting a little crazy with it. And definitely off of Castellani. You could see that on the replay. Free ball for the Americans. Oh, Kavika Soji. What a play. You don't have to beat me up. I know it was I'm a excited. good play. I'm excited. I, I get it. I get it. Kavika Soji. I said, look what he could do on the play before. How about this one? An athletic young man. That was smart because a lot of free balls, they try to get the setter involved by shooting the ball to the right front position. Well, if you're going to shoot the ball to the right front, I'll just go up and hit it. He looked like, looked like Chip McCaw on that play. Chip McCaw used to do that all the time. One of the quickest arms I've ever seen on a player. 
Forget just the center. Uh, again, beautiful identification and nice swing by Argentina. They do a magnificent job of moving the ball around. Ripped down the line by Carson Clark. Pretty unique to see a left-handed volleyball player, let alone at the opposite position. How does that change things if you're Argentina? Well, if you're Argentina, you end up overrunning the ball all the time. That's what happens with a lefty. Think about the good lefties in the world. Sartoretti from Italy many years ago, finished up at the 2004 Olympics. In his magnificent career, I think about Angel Dennis, who actually played on the left for Cuba for a long time. Service error by Paul Lottman. That'll get us to the first technical timeout. Argentina and the United States tied at a set of peace. Third set, opening weekend of the preliminary round of the 2013 World League. Argentina won the opening match last night, three sets to one, and this one is right there for anybody's taking. Anderson off the block of Castellani and out of bounds. Matt Anderson having a much improved evening now, 10 of 22 on the evening, and has only been blocked twice and hit out once. So 318, pretty nice percentage for a man that's expected to hit some off plays and against some well-formed blocks as option number one for the U.S. offense. Again, the United States blocked seven balls in set number two, hoping to keep that sort of thing going. That seven was a huge total. Anderson off the block and out of bounds once again. Kavika Shoji cleaned that one up from Dave Lee. Saved Dave Lee because this is a pretty easy play. Dave Lee needs to get his feet to it. And then a nice swing from Anderson. Boy, bringing it across the body, working on the hands out on the outside arm. The Argentine block. Americans have settled down nicely in this match. First lead of this third set for the United States, 9-8. Anderson having to do an awful lot of work in that particular play and eventually get stuck on the outside. He did a good job calling for the ball. I think this ball is just a little too, a little too outside there for Matt Anderson. Not bad, but Anderson certainly not getting the approach that he wanted. A couple of very nice block moves from Matt during that play. Particularly like the first one where he was all the way to the pin and straight over at the moment of contact. Castellani. Maybe a play where Anderson should have just tipped the ball into the block and sort of restarted the point. That ball hit well long. So the United States gives up back-to-back -back points. Now they're looking up at Argentina once again, 10-9. You see young teams do this. They'll give up a couple of points. It's the runs that kill you both emotionally and also on the scoreboard. Castellani, who was unstoppable at the beginning of this match, has really slowed down. He was eight for his first ten. He's just one for his last seven with a couple of service errors thrown in. He's shaking his head back there and with good reason. Shoji. And that's going to be a three meter line violation. Back row attacker can only attack the ball legally above the plane of the net if you take off with both feet behind the line. I want to see Kavika Shoji hit this one straight down the line. Don't give it an easy one into the corner to Gonzalez. Work on Bengalea. Hit that gap on Bengalea. He's, he showed us in the last set he could hit straight. That ball's out of bounds. The Argentina looking for a touch, none detected. And now Argentina 
has given up three straight points. And a timeout is taken by their head coach, Javier Weber. The United States and Argentina, after the Argentines having a big advantage at the offensive end, the Americans have come back to even this match. 35 kills apiece, and Kavika Soji continuing to serve. The United States on top once again, and doing a better job of serving away from last night's player of the match, Alexis Gonzalez, the outstanding libero for Argentina. Off the block and out of bounds, Argentina to serve, trailing 12-11. Kill. You know, we've talked an awful lot about Gonzalez, the libero for Argentina, and rightfully so. But Eric Shoji, his first time out, starting at the libero for the United States, he's been solid. He has, and he's been reading the game. You can tell he's been playing for a long time. He's been reading the game well, but he also makes these nice, quiet moves, particularly in service reception, moves with confidence, as he did there on that last play. I like the play from the young 2-2. Off the top of the net and down for the ace. Server, you love this rule when that happens. Change at the setter position for Argentina. Luciano De Checo, their captain number 15, has come on to replace Nicolas Uriarte. Anderson again. Oh, the middle attackers are so good. And it doesn't matter who the setter is. It just looks the same. Soleil, six for 11, Creer, six for eight. There is Luciano De Checco, was the starting setter for the Argentinian national team at the London Olympic Games, and his head coach, Javier Weber, one of the great setters of his generation, having appeared in over 600 matches for Argentina, thinks in due course De Checco will be known as the best setter in the world. And you're saying, okay, well, he wasn't even starting, so what are you talking about? He's just been back with the team after his professional league for about four or five days, and it was just too soon. Maybe you want to give him a little bit of a, a break physically and mentally after a very, very challenging professional season and, and then work him into the lineup. Yeah, you have to understand how the international game works and the flow for these international players. They've been playing in their league since October of last year at the conclusion of the Olympic Games. Everyone departed to their... Professional teams, a serve for David Smith. And now they've just gotten back with the national team, so for everyone, the case is the same. You've brought them all back from all over the world, and you're trying to integrate them into a system together. Just like at the end of set number two, Dave Smith doing a wonderful job serving the ball and getting a lot of help from Captain Matt Anderson blocking and attacking as well. Third set, United States leading Argentina 16 to 12, and there is six foot ten Matt Anderson, a great career at Penn State, now lighting it up professionally over in Russia. His first Olympic experience, not exactly according to plan, as the United States finished fifth. But when he went back to his home in upstate New York, uh, it was a big reception.
And there is Anderson. Wasn't feeling particularly well last night. His play showed he's been much better in the second match. Yeah, Matt Anderson Day. I like that. Matt Anderson Day in your hometown. I think this this young man's future is bright. Every conversation about outside hitter for the United States starts with Matt Anderson and whoever else at outside hitter. Right? This kid, he wants to do the right thing. Not only is he an exceptional talent right now, but he wants to get better. He wants to be better with his teammates, learn how to maximize his talent and those around him. He's just a good kid, and I'm really excited about the future for this young man, an opportunity to watch him develop and be a part of what will hopefully be continued U.S. success. Now 26, he's been around the game long enough to certainly have a lot of experience under his belt. A lot is expected because he has got a world of talent. And a world of, and an awful lot is needed from Matt Anderson every time out as this uh, team continues to develop and take shape. Yeah, and hopefully that, that lessens as time goes on as some of the other young players that we're seeing now develop. I think under John Spraw and his system, you will see that. 16-14, here is Tacheco, the new setter for Argentina. Lotman over the top and Castellani unable to track that down and that makes it 17-14 the United States. Shoji and Lotman have misconnected quite a few times on the outside. Lotman saying it was him on that play. I don't like any time that ball gets pushed too far outside. Hang it up inside, let the hitter come get it. Ball softly into the block, but out of the middle. Pablo Creer not getting any help from his teammates. American blocker seven in the second set. That's only their first of this set, but why have they improved so much? Well, you can improve behind Dave Lee anytime. The quick hands of number four have always been important for the Americans in the last four or five years. Timeout called by Argentina. The United States leading 18-14. But Javier Weber not taking any chances, just a couple of points away from the technical timeout. Doesn't want to see this set slip away. Next up will be France. That those matches in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Each set of matches is a back-to-back -back affair. And then the United States, again, the at home against a very, very powerful team from Bulgaria, currently ranked eighth in the world. They also finished fifth at the Olympic Games. And the Americans will finish off Poland, great to play for the home, and also the same can be said for Brazil. Yeah, one of the couple of the great places to play in the world when it comes to the sport of volleyball. Now watch David Lee number four, see if he slips into the zone here. You hear about the zone when it comes to basketball shooters, when it comes to home run hitters. Well, Dave Lee is one of the few players in the world who slips into that zone, blocking, but Carson Clark comes up with an ace. Forget Clark. having David Lee block it, just serve it right down. Clark and Smith have both been very effective from the service line. A big ad addition for the United States. Oh, there's that angle difference. Receivers aren't used to seeing the ball go from right to left. Oh, good shot again off the top of the block. What do you do against a hitter like Pereira? He's not aiming at the court. He's just aiming at the top of the block. Coaches will tell you to get low and over. Push over so he can't utilize the fingertips. If he's going to go over you with that kind of speed, kind of half speed, three-quarter speed, the defense better pick it up. Pereira comes right back. Federico Pereira misses that serve out of bounds. The United States, speaking of the Olympic Games in their fifth place finish, lost to Italy, the eventual bronze medal winners. And Argentina was eliminated by their southern South American rivals from Brazil, also in the quarterfinals. Brazil went on to win the silver medal. Russia coming back in one of the great matches that we've ever seen, one of the great individual performances. Certainly one of the great all-time Olympic matches. I think that's right up there, if not better than the 96 final between Italy and Holland. I have not gone back to watch that match. I ought to. Carson Clark coming quick out of the back row. He is the fastest of the opposites in the U.S. gym, no question. United States doing a nice job of maintaining the energy, maintaining the side out, and maintaining a five-point advantage. Big lead here for the Americans and looking for their first lead so far in this two-match set, tied at one set apiece. Bengalea once again in a beautiful delivery from Decheco. 
Medina's going to need to score some points here and get that transition attack going again. Smart setting with Pacheco going out over the smaller Shoji. And Anderson returning the favor. I was just thinking about that Olympic final. And Dmitry Mazursky putting up 31 points in that match at seven foot two, going from the middle blocker to the opposite position and just doing some things that I've never seen a player do before in my life. Shoji. Yeah, there's no extra opposite on that Russian roster in that Olympic Games, but that was the ace in the hole, was moving Dmitry Musersky, who had played some opposite for his club team, had done it in the Russian League, into that opposite spot, but it was a singular performance, no doubt, by Dmitry Musersky. And yeah, he's only 24 years old? Yeah, you're just not supposed to be able to do that. That's a little bit like <laughs> going from, from playing center to playing point guard. Oh, it's starting to drain threes. And he was making it all look very easy. He just completely took over that match, but getting back to this, the United States, boy, after about 21 all in the second set, and then the United States trailed 23-21, came back to send it into overtime, won the second set 27-25. Boy, they have been a much improved team. And they have controlled this set. We've not seen a single timeout from the Americans, and I think John Spra has probably used both of his timeouts in every other set of this season. Commanding lead now for the United States, and it's getting even bigger. Great three-man move. Paul Lottman all the way. That was a beautiful set by DiCecco. And not a terrible swing, just a great blocking move by the Americans. The first set they have truly controlled in this match series. A ninth block for the United States to just five for Argentina. Set point number one. Yeah, Castellani off the right side away from Lottman. Anderson tried to cut it. He tried. He, he just doesn't have it yet, but at no. least the, 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 the wheels are turning. He's seeing it. He's thinking about it. He just doesn't have the, the drop shot, if you will, yet. A for effort, C for execution on yeah. that one. Yeah, the execution wasn't very good. Set point again. And that'll do it. That ball carries well long, and now the United States, I know it's very early, but this is a must-win situation, particularly as heavily as the American schedule is home-loaded the first couple of weeks. And now the United States leads this best three out of five, two sets to one after winning the third. Set number four, Argentina for the first time in this weekend series in Wichita, looking up at a deficit in the United States, really turning it around. They turned it around with blocking in the second set, third set. They won easily 25-19. What did you see as the biggest difference? Steady play and perfect passing. Paul Lottman stepped into this match and has passed 91% perfect while also going 9 of 12, hitting 667. He is doing a great job, and next to him, Eric Shoji in just his second match with this senior team, 82% perfect in his service reception. So the Americans all of a sudden able to run an offense because they're getting the passing. And to put that in some context, 60% is pretty good. It's a good number. 70% is a good, of really nice yeah. number. So yeah, 80 and 90%, some things are going right. Yep, that's really going to help your team function offensively. Underway to Checo on to set and to serve for Argentina. That ball tipped out of bounds. We've talked about a lot of things that have gone right for the United States, but 
Argentina seems to be coming apart at the seams right now. Yeah, they're just making the mistakes that we saw earlier from the Americans. They're making a lot of service errors. So far in this match, they have 13 service errors to just one ace. The Americans have 12 service errors, but they have seven aces, so they're getting some reward from that risk. And also, you like that ball there, the second contact, we're just seeing that fade away. You mentioned how efficient they were through one set. It's all gone past since that point for Argentina. Combination play out of the back row, all keyed by the jump serve from Clark. U.S. has certainly stolen the momentum, and the way you do it is by making plays. Good serve, great transition. What a good choice. You see how close that ball was set to the net, and that was Anderson hitting it out of the back row. And the tempo of that ball as well. That's hit quicker than a two ball. And Anderson got to have a lot of confidence in Kavika Shoji that that set is going to be perfect because he is gone. He's committed to hitting that ball. Oh, he's on his last step when that ball is getting set. He is practically in the air as that ball comes out from Kavika. Carson Clark hearing it from his head coach and a couple of his teammates after missing that jump serve. Just underway, fourth set. Another nice pass from Anderson. Oh, did Checo. Beautiful dish getting that ball back up. And there is the blocking once again by David Lee, number four in blue. Yeah, David Lee with a great assist from Paul Lottman working his way after that swing. Look at how Lottman works all the way to the right. He just keeps going into the play. Really smart, great read from Lottman. Paul Lottman came off the bench for the United States in the opener of this two-match set, played pretty well, and was called upon to do exactly the same in this match. And on both occasions, has performed very well. Pascalani misses that ball out of bounds. And after a brilliant start, he has really struggled. Eight out of his first ten, three for his last ten, and he's been blocked four times. You have to wonder if Javier Weber is thinking about some changes. Lotman again. Pretty easy serve. Oh, that ball can't go down. Good dig that time by Carson Clark. And three Americans there, but all of them pretty well frozen in terms of who is going after that ball. Kavika Shoji has to run that ball down. He's the setter. Run under it, throw it straight up, let the left side hitter get it. Don't leave any question in the mind of anyone else who is going to set the ball. And as well as your block and do anything just to keep the ball in play. Clark stuffed straight down by Bengalea. Good positioning by Bengalea. He didn't overrun the play, which so often happens with lefties. You want to force lefties to go wrist away. Or pardon me, Ooh. to go cross body and pull it all the way across their body straight down the line. Bengalea just lined up with that left hand in the right spot. And just like that, after a slow start, the Americans uh, lead over Argentina. It's just 4-3. It was the Argentines with a looked a little bit uh, disheveled to start this fourth set. The Americans coming right back. I like that Choji's utilizing the pick out of that pipe, the back row attack, because that was a focus of the American offense for so long in the last eight years is to get that going. You haven't seen much of it through the first set and a half. Well, it's starting to pick up now. That ball set very tight, slam dink by Bengalea. Well, it was interesting. John Spira told us before the match that how impressed he was with the middle blockers, Soleil and Career for Argentina. But he said they move very well side to side. Well, now maybe test them a little bit head to head. That ball served out of bounds. More poor serving, 14 service errors, a single ace for Argentina and frustration when that happens look at the faces of these players as they continue to miss serves they know that's no way to win a set well they won the opening set easily 25 22 maybe thought they were on their way at a comfortable lead in the second set let that get away the United States fought off two set points in the second set came back and won the second 25 27 25 carried the momentum right over won the third 25 19 and I know it's only a one point set so far, but the Americans have been the better team in this fourth set. Still early, just one. If Argentina keeps serving like this, they won't have to do much. Put it out there again, picnic bump. Go to the picnic <laughs> bump. So now Anderson once again. 13 kills, 27 attempts, hitting 333. He's got a couple of aces and a couple of errors, and you'll take that one to one ratio anytime. Oh, 
Herrera down the line. I think Argentina got away with one there. I think, I think it was a back row attack early in this rally here. It ends with a kill by Perea, but I think that Castellani was over with his left foot, and everyone in the gym missed it. United States leading 7-6, and now another missed serve. Wow. And we'll get to the first technical timeout. Javier Weber is about to explode. Teams back out on the court here at the beautiful Charles Koch Arena. A lot of excitement here at Wichita State after their basketball team made it to the Final Four. And with very, very good reason. Good volleyball program as well. Their women's team consistently and entering into the NCAA tournament. Last year went to the Sweet 16. Off the top of the tape. Pereira hitting high. Boy, that is a quick set to the outside, and that one right off the dome of Carson Park. This match, this set, only separated by one point, but it doesn't feel like no. it out there on the court. Argentina way down. The Americans playing with increased confidence. Argentina needs to make some plays and clean up the mistakes in order to recapture the momentum. And got to serve a ball in the court. There's one. And that ball off the tape and down by David Lee. That ball was coming up earlier in this match by Argentina. Off the top of the tape, slowed significantly. Look at David Lee. He knows he was a little bit fortunate there. Carson Clark. Legal play and deep, and then right back. Why not? Let's get this over with in a hurry. Pablo Creer going downtown, 8 for 12. Smart read by DiCecco, and Paul Lottman, not really his responsibility. I'd like to see him running there and maybe try and block middle just for fun. He wasn't sure where David Lee was. David Lee was, I think, having a soda in the front row over there. Hey, outside blockers want nothing to do with moving into the middle. If, you're, if your middle blocker is over the barrier and down for the count, outside attacker still going, come on, come on, get in here. Oh, bad free ball pass. And the United States pays the price. Matt Anderson, late getting to that ball. You got to be absolutely perfect. Pablo Creer making him pay. That ball coming over. Now, Anderson is a little bit late, and he doesn't commit to it. He's got one foot in instead of having both feet there and maybe all the way under with his hands. But at the very least, get both your feet there and get your platform out. Don't go into the lunge position. Those small little plays, you go from a free ball situation, which should be completely to your advantage, to a deficit against a world-class team like Argentina. Americans back on top 10-9, and the serving for Argentina is awful. I'm not sure Awful describes it well I enough. was being nice. <laughs> I'm a welcome 17 host. 17 service errors. Stuck block by David Lee. And we're going to see Rodrigo Quiroga for the first time. Yeah, time and again, you just see David Lee with fantastic hands. That's not a bad swing from Bengalea. It's up high. David Lee just gets his hand on it, and not only gets his hand on it, but then directs the ball down. 
Bengalea, 12 for 28. He's been blocked four times. Last night was the leading scorer for Argentina, and now one of the veterans on this team, ripe old age of 26, Rodrigo Quiroga. And he likes to play very fast, although this one a little bit high, and he misses his first swing. No touch detected. That happens all the time. A cold player comes on, and they immediately set him the ball. you got to put it somewhere else. Look at, look at John Spraw here. He coaches a Quiroga. At UCLA, he has the brother of Rodrigo Quiroga, Francisco Quiroga, playing for him right now in college. The ball served out of bounds. A lot of fun, normal players coming to the United States to play in college and then playing internationally or have connections internationally. Kevin Tilly, French player whose father coaches the French national team, who we'll see next week. Played for John Spry at UC Irvine. Played at UC Irvine this past year. Well, David Lee has really stepped it up. It starts with his blocking in Beijing. I know that was a long time ago, but he was one of the huge stories behind winning that gold medal. And uh, you mentioned a unique arm swing. Boy, unique and awfully good. And that was the thing with David, is he came to the national team with this blocking ability, with this innate ability to read the play and make some block moves. He learned the offensive part and became a complete middle and arrived just in time for those 2008 games. And he is one of the elite middles in the world, even though he's a small middle, six foot eight. He's not a big middle by any means, but he plays much bigger than his actual size. To give you an idea, the two middle blockers for the Russian team that won the gold medal, seven foot two and seven foot even, Alexander Volkov and Dmitry Mazursky. A look at the service errors, and we have talked about the 17 for Argentina. Well, the United States has 15. You may say, well, that's only two difference. Yeah, well, the real difference is the number you don't see. Seven aces for the Americans, one for Argentina. Henderson is blocked on the outside by Soleil. Even though with all of these errors by Argentina, it seems like the United States has the momentum. You look up at the scoreboard, and it's a one-point advantage. Really neat move by Soleil there. A little hop step, a little skip step, and straight up. Oriarte on again as part of the double sub. Chance for the tie. Quiroga high up into the block. And tip to the floor. Nice play by Shoji. A nice job by Paul Lottman to read that play, handle that ball perfectly. Paul Lottman, he's not the flashiest guy out there. He's not an emotional guy. He's just kind of a steady guy, and sometimes he gets lost. Let me go and look at his numbers for this match, and Paul Lottman is making a difference. 10 of 18, hitting 444. He's collected a block, and he's made all kinds of great ball handling plays in reception and defense. Good serve by Shoji. Slicing and dicing in front of Kuroga, and just like that, the Americans' lead is back up to three. There's the cut we want, and go after the new guy. Time, not a good free ball pass for Argentina and Romanuti and missed that off the top of the block. No touch detected, and that'll get us to the second technical timeout. The United States looking for a split. These opening matches lead here in the fourth, 16-12. The United States leading 16 to 12 and two sets to one over Argentina. We've talked about a lot of the top men's teams in the world. Let's now take a look at the FIBB world rankings on the women's side. The United States under the direction of new head coach Karch Kirai is ranked number one. Brazil number two, Japan number three. That was almost the order of finish at the Olympic Games. Brazil won the gold medal in what was considered a huge upset. Italy four. Very, very strong program. China and then Russia. Russia lost a lot of veteran players. 
But uh, that will be uh, interesting to see their big competition this summer is the 2013 World Grand Prix, August 28th through September 1st, the finals in Sapporo, Japan. There is so much talent now in the United States gym. We were down at practice when we went to interview some of the top men's players for this competition, the start of the World League. And I watched the women's team practice for a little while. My goodness, what talent. And pretty good talent on display here. Good block by Dave Smith. How much would Dave Smith learn from working and watching a player like David Lee each and every day? Oh, just being in the gym with him, that's what you want to do. And that's why you sign with a certain club or you get those reps with the national team. They're so important. You definitely learn by watching and facing those players every day in practice. David, oh, great dig by Shoji. Beautiful read. Back to the middle again, no. Kiroga shopping, just to finish the thought on David Lee. He had an interesting summer. He played in a World Club Championship for a team put together for a nice sum of money in Cutter. And then he went on and played in the Champions League along with the same team as Matt Anderson, Zenit Kazan. Well, David Smith was playing in the French A League and his team won the National Championship. Oh. Good combination. I'm very impressed with Kavika Shoji the longer we get to see him. Oh, I like what Shoji did there. I like what Smith did, working hard. Fortunate that he was over on that side, and Paul Lottman kind of fighting that ball off, but keeping it in a good position up on the net. Americans continue to receive serve well, and it makes side out so much easier. The United States with a commanding lead now, 18-13. Argentina has really, really gone downhill with regard to their level of play. You know, you had that feeling, and you mentioned it, Kevin. Everything going the Americans' way. You look up, Argentina's trailing by only one, but it seemed like a matter of time. All the momentum, all the quality now on the side of the United States. And that ball served out of bounds. That's been one of the biggest stories. 18. One, one of the worst serving performances I can ever remember. One ace. 18 errors. That's, you know, plus and minus. That's 17 points where the United States has to do nothing except say thank you. And David Smith serves the ball out of bounds. The Americans are still close to the ratio that, in my mind, is appropriate. One to two. And even you'll hear some college coaches say one to three is okay, aces to errors. The Americans are eight aces on 17 errors. Okay, you don't want 17 errors, but you'll take it if you can get eight aces. I think the 18 to one ratio is a little bit different on the other side as Castellani is back in. Ducheco back to serve once again. 19-15 is the American lead. Done a much better job blocking. And I'm tired of talking about it. Unbelievably. And Javier Weber is just beside himself. He just looks like a head coach with no answers at all right now. He has already talked to his team about serving about five different times. We've heard him during the timeout. Servicio. Carson Clark. Another ace for the United States. Ace number nine. Timeout, Argentina. Commanding lead. The United States needed a split. They lost the opening set, and now just a couple of points away from taking this match. On both matches, Brian Thornton started the match, and also Murphy Troy started, and then as the match went on, and not very well for the United States, we saw Carson Clark come in, albeit a losing effort on the opening night, and Kavika Shoji as well. What do you expect to see maybe next week against France? A little more of them early? Who knows? It, yeah, I agree. Who knows? There are guys back I just in the asked gym the that questions. could end up on this match, too. I mean, it, or end up in the next match. Really, that's the thing. It's going to be learning, and, and there will be some arcs. There will be some guys that earn some time. If you have the same two setters, you judge them to be the best guys to bring on the next trip, I would expect to see Shoji starting. Uh, as for Carson Clark, yeah, I think if he's on the same roster along with uh, Murphy Troy, I think you give Carson Clark an opportunity to start. It's a delicate balance between the flow of the match, the flow of the tournament, the flow of any particular set, and also the confidence of players. I mean, Garrett Mwagatudia started this match. 
and you want him to get time as a young player, but when you take him out and the next guy plays great, it's impossible to put him back in. Another timeout called by Argentina, probably way too little too late. They are out of time. The United States is going to even this series. After losing last night three sets to one, they have come back and after losing the opening set 25-22, have played very, very well indeed. What is that face all about from Kiroga? <laughs> Teams back out on the floor. Argentina out of timeouts and out of time overall. Serving a big part of it. Remember they were hitting 600 in the opening set. Now that total is down to 274 and it's the United States that started slowly offensively that's up to 323. So a complete turnaround after the Americans came back. And Carson Clark again. Another ace. 10 aces for the Americans. A chance to get to match point, and there it is. Now it's a little bit of fun. You're the one putting the service pressure on. You're the one pounding the ball in transition. And the crowd loves it. Well, what a good response for the United States after a slow start, mind you. Seems like a long time ago. Off the block and out of bounds. Match point number two, Federico Pereira. Luckman, not yet. And that'll do it. The first set aside, a solid performance by the United States. They came back from a late two-point deficit to take the second set, 27-25. And after that, they just absolutely rolled. They won the third set, 25-19, and the fourth set, 25-16. Over the last two sets, the United States outscores Argentina 50-35, to 35, 10 aces. Carson Clark superb, as was Captain Matt Anderson after an off night in the opening match when he was a little bit under the weather not making any excuses but he was not himself matt anderson goes 14 of 29 also a couple of blocks and a couple of aces he was absolutely superb and the united states hearing it from this crowd here at wichita a very nice host for the opening weekend of world league play And Kavika Sochi did an absolutely marvelous job. The United States goes on to win it. Three sets to one. They blocked well. The coaching, uh, the substitution changes all worked out. Paul Lottman was exceptional as well. And now standing by, the player of the match, the captain for the United States, Matt Anderson with our Kevin Barnett.